In this class, we are going to learn how to create a Linux virtual machine in Azure with the help of Azure portal. I am here in the official documentation page by Microsoft on Azure that is to create the Linux virtual machine in Azure with the help of Azure portal. Now if you see on the table of content, we can create a Linux virtual machine with the help of CLI, portal, PowerShell, Terraform, Bicep as well as the template. In this class, we will focus how to create the VM with the help of Azure portal. I will provide this link in the description. Kindly check out the link if you are stuck anywhere while practicing this class. So at the time of recording this class, the latest version of Ubuntu is 22.04 LTS and we are going to use this Ubuntu Linux distro in order to demonstrate today's use case that is to create the VM in Azure portal. Here Microsoft has provided step by step approach how we have to achieve the use case. We are going to follow the same in order to create the VM in today's class. Now without wasting much time, let's begin with our hands on. The first step is we have to get into this Azure portal that is portal.azure.com. I am here in the home page that is portal.azure.com slash hash home. We can navigate to creating the virtual machine from the home screen that is by clicking on virtual machine or we can just search for virtual machine over here. We can find it or else we can just click on this navigation menu or the portal menu. We can click on this create a resource and then select the virtual machine. There are bunch of options available in the portal how we have to create the virtual machine. Now let me click on this virtual machine. So it will open up the list of all the virtual machines which have been created in this subscription. I don't have any virtual machines created in my subscription. Click on this create button. Click on this Azure virtual machine. It will open the page that is to create the virtual machine. Now first and the foremost thing we have to select the subscription and select the resource group. So you have to be very careful which resource group you are creating and the subscription to select. You can have n number of subscriptions in your account like a development production environment or a subscription as well as project wise like the CM, SCM, so and so forth things. Resource group. So you have to be very careful to which resource group you are adding this VM. The resource groups are basically used in order to group the resources so that you can manage at the single place all the resources which are part of a group. I hope you know all those things already. Now coming to the virtual machine name, you have to provide the unique name over here. Let me give my testing for VM over here. You have to select the region where you are going to create the virtual machine. Again, the pricing for the VM across the region will vary. So you have to be careful in terms of pricing as well as in terms of the law in which country you are residing and for which customer you are creating the VM for. So in few of the countries, there is a strict law that the data shouldn't go out of their country. You have to create the VM in that specific region only. Now coming to the availability option, suppose if you want to have a higher availability or the reliability, then you can go for this virtual machine skill set where you can add a number of VMs over here, which will be residing in the multiple zones and the fault domains. Coming to the availability set, you can have your VM distributed across the fault domains in the availability sets. So for this use case, I'm not selecting anything, no infrastructure redundancy I'm selecting. Coming to the security type, you can go for the standard by default, it's a trusted launch VM. Now coming to the image, we have to select the Linux version which we want to use. So I have selected Ubuntu Server 20.04 LTS, that is the Gen 2 version and it is the latest at the time of recording this class. Apart from Ubuntu Linux, we are having a SUSC Linux, Red Hat, Oracle Linux. So you can select whatever Linux version or the distribution you want to use for creating virtual machine. Coming to the architecture, I'm going for the 64 version, I'm not going for the ARM. Coming to the size, by default it will be 2 vCPUs. If you want to change this, you can just select this, see all sizes and it will open the bunch of options available for your use case. If you want to change, you can just select something else and click on select. So that's particular shape and the memory will be selected. Accordingly, you will be charged. Now it is showing as a 52 per month. Coming to the authentication type, in this class we will focus on creating the VM with the help of the password. First of all, we need to provide the username. I will provide the username and give the password. You have to confirm the password as well. So in our next class, we will learn how to create the VM with the help of SSH public key as well. Coming to the inbound ports, I will open SSH as well as the HTTP. We will install a web server as well in this class in order to demonstrate how to set up a VM, how to SSH into the VM. So we will look how we can install a web server and we can access our web server with the help of browser. Now if you see, this is part of this documentation by Microsoft over here first it is trying to SSH into this virtual machine they have demonstrated with the help of SSH key 
this we will look in our next class but in this class we will see how we can ssh with the help of username and password and then we will subsequently go ahead by installing the web server so if you are not interested on configuring rest of the details you can straight away go to the review and create so if you want to see what in all default microsoft has added to the disk networking management you can see each and everything coming to the os disk type it is selecting the premium ssd suppose if you want to reduce the cost then you can go for the hard disk drive because ssd drives are little costly if you want to attach new disk like the d drive c drive what we have in the windows operating system such kind of thing uh, like to increase the storage you can attach the disk and the size you can select so i'm not going to do that in this class coming to the networking if you are already having a virtual network you can select from here and don't have any virtual network created so it is creating a new one for me or else you can just click on this and create a new one if you are not happy with the naming convention of microsoft coming to the subnet it is adding this default subnet for me and the public id address it will create with this resource coming to the nic security group all these things are basic coming to the inbound ports it is allowing http at and the sss rdp is not required for linux usually it is for the windows operating systems suppose if you have selected the virtual machine scale set or the availability set where you are having n number of virtual machines then the load will be distributed across the vm with this load balancer click on the management here you can select the identity these are mostly related to the governance and the security suppose if you want to save the cost then you can shut down your vms at regular intervals like after five o'clock if you are not using this vm suppose if you are creating this vm for the development purpose then you can shut down this and you can select the time and the time zone as per which you want to shut down this vm so i'm not selecting that option over here coming to the monitoring you can select what kind of monitoring you want under the diagnostic guest os diagnostics if you want to alert like you can configure the alerts over here so whenever any utilization of the cpu or the ram increases by so and so percentage or the value then you will be notified again this will come at some charge it is shown over here it is like 20 cents per month now i don't want to enable this in this class click on the advanced so here all you get the advanced configuration for the virtual machine coming to the tag you can add the tag so that you can uniquely identify at later point of time like who has created this vm and for what project purpose and so for things by default there will be few of the tags created like created by created for again if you see there is a created by do we don't have to create a new tag suppose if you are happy with the naming convention of microsoft we can go ahead with this like x created by x created for like this is created for a cm project they can we can give like this and created by you can provide the name of the person who has created so all those things you can do once done click on this review plus create here microsoft will list what is the pricing for this vm so it is showing 7 cents per hour now if you scroll down it will list basically all the details like whatever you have configured for this vm so once you are happy with all the details you don't want to edit then you can click on create if you want to edit you can just click on the tabs over here else you can use these buttons like previous next buttons in order to navigate between the tabs in this page and once you are happy click on create so you will get a message like initializing deployment it will validate all the details like the naming you have provided for the virtual machine and other stuff when all the validation it passes then it is submitted for deployment so once it is deployed it, you will get the overview of the deployment like this you can just refresh and see what and all things had been deployed once the deployment is completed you will get the message on the right top corner of the page like the deployment succeeded now if you want to see the details like in how many seconds it has deployed you can just click on the details for the vm so you can see it has deployed in one minute apart from virtual machine it has also deployed this network interface card for us as well as the virtual network it has created it has created a network security group as well as the public ip address it has created in order to access the vm now if you want to go to the vm just click on this go to resource or else we can just search for the virtual machines over here click on this so it will list all the virtual machines which has been created in this subscription click on the virtual machine details over here let me just minimize now here you will get the overview like what is the ip address what is the subnet what is the subscription it has created and other details like the monitoring and all the next question is how we can ssh into this virtual machine so for that we have to go to this connect over here so rdp is not applicable for this only option is ssh so if you are using the ssh keys then it is this method what you have to use in order to ssh into the virtual machine in our case this is not applicable we will look in the next class how to create the vm with the help of the ssh keys now for this class we will have to copy this command over here open the powershell or the azure shell over here 
So whatever you are comfortable with, like Bash or PowerShell, you can use. I'm comfortable with Bash scripting, so I'm selecting this. Now whatever we have copied, just we have to paste it over here. Now we don't have the SSH key, that is private key. What I will do is I will remove this and click on enter. Also, you might ask what is this address over here? I will show you shortly. If you get some question like are you sure you want to continue connecting, you have to provide S. Now it will ask for the password. We have to provide the password which we had given while configuring this VM. So once you provide the password, it will SSH and log into my VM. Now if you see, it is username and the VM name. If you scroll up, this is the Azure CLI. It is in this directory. Now once we SSH, it will change the directory. So I will be under this VM. Now if you just see LS or PWD, I will be accessing the directories in the virtual machine. So this is the Ubuntu running on the cloud. Now if you want to do anything like create a directory or install our server, we can do over here. As I told, this IP address over here in the SSH, that is SSH Azure user. So if you are finding difficult navigating over here, that is to go to connect, go to SSH and find this path, then you can go to this overview and you can copy the IP address. It is the same IP address which I have provided over here. Well, I tried to SSH into this VM. There is a username at the rate and the IP address. Same like this we have to provide. Now, there is other method how we have to SSH into this VM or how we can access directly. If you are not comfortable with the SSH commands, if you just scroll down under help, there is this serial console. Just click on this serial console. With the help of serial console also, you will be able to access and use the directory or the VM files. It will take a couple of seconds to launch this service console for the VM. Press enter. It will ask the username. We have to provide the username which we had given while configuring the VM. Next, it will ask for the password. We have to provide password over here. Yeah, now I am in the virtual machine file directory. Now I can provide the ls over here or I can check the directory where I am in. It is under home slash and the username. Let me just go back. So I can list all the directories and I can install the server from here as well. So these are a couple of methods how you can access. Or else what you can do is you can make use of the PowerShell on your Windows operating system. Like this. And you can provide the SSH command like what we have used. So in case if you are having a SSH key, then you have to provide the path, else you can directly SSH into this VM. Now suppose if you are making use of Mac or Linux operating system, you can launch the terminal in your computer, then you can provide the SSH command over here. So what we have used with the help of the Azure CLI on the cloud, same SSH command you can provide and click on enter. You have to make sure the port is open, that is the SSH port on your VM. Now if you scroll up under the networking, you can find Suppose if you have forgotten to enable the inbound ports for that is SSH that is 22 over here you have to create that is by clicking on the add import port and you have to populate the details something like this. Suppose if you want to have a secure connection then you have to provide the IP address of your machine you can provide the range as well over here and avoid opening your VM for all the source addresses because the hackers might constantly see which and all ports are open and they can get into your VM by using the common username passwords and they can access other resources and take away your personal data. And the last step is installing the web server. Let me just copy this command that is sudo app get update and install nginx. I have already opened the port 80 over here. If you have not opened the port 80 for the HTTP you have to do before going ahead with installing else you won't be able to access the web server. Now go to this shell. Now we need to copy it over here. Install the nginx. So we have installed the web server. Now next method is you can make use of the browser in order to test whether the web server is open or not. Other method is we can make use of the Linux command. That is this one. curl hyphen hyphen connect and the timeout pi and the url now this is http colon slash slash and the public ip address of my vm now we will get the same from the overview as well that is the ip address public ip address we need to use now click on enter now you will get a common message from the engine server now other method is we can make use of the browser over here let me just provide http and the so this i am accessing from my local computer not from the azure shell or something else this is the browser of my local computer so you can just touch this I am able to access this web server because I have enabled the port 80 over here under the networkings. So we had selected this SSH and the HTTP port at the time of creating this virtual machine. Suppose if you have not created this, then you will not be able to access. Suppose I will delete this from here, click on S. 
I have successfully deleted this HTTP rule from my NSG. Now let us try to access the VM with the help of this call command and see whether we are able to get the response or not. Click on enter. Now as you can see it is just trying to access and it is unable to get the response on the server and it is getting timed out and writing the message. Now similar thing you can find with the browser as well. So in the case of browser you can make use of a new incognito mode or a new open the browser once again because sometimes the website details will be cached and you won't find the difference. Now suppose I add the details back over here like inbound role any any and the services for the HTTP. Let me just select the HTTP and the protocol everything it will select as is you can provide the meaningful name click on add so once the rule has been added let me just open the shell over again now let me provide the url click on enter we got the response sometimes it will take a couple of seconds in order to reflect the things now here it took almost 5 to 6 seconds and then in the second call it has returned the response from the NGINX server. So apart from this if you want to change the tags you can just go to the overview over here click on the edit tag. Suppose if you want to know how to connect if you want to add the disk or remove the disk all those things you can do with the help of disk management over here. Coming to the sizes you can change the size like if you want your VM to consume less memory or CPU then you can have over here. Coming to the identity, you can provide the identity details coming to the configurations. Also, you can lock this VM on some conditions. Also, if you don't want to have this SSH open for all, then you can make use of this just-in-time access. Suppose if you want to SSH into this VM, then you can ask or request the just-in-time access. Then you can SSH, you will get a slot for some duration of hours. In that time, it will be open so that you can safeguard your virtual machine from the hackers who are regularly searching for the machines on the cloud whose ports are open so that you can get into this resource and access other resources like the database and take away all your data. So in our next class, we will see how to create the virtual machine with the help of SSH keys.